In this video, I'll be showing you how to add a corrosion resistant nickel finish to your homemade or store bought copper bus bars for your lithium iron phosphate battery, or to add a corrosion resistant finish to steel, copper, and brass parts. If you live very close to the ocean like me, then you'll know that the salt air can be quite damaging to many metals, so having a corrosion resistant bus bar is absolutely necessary. Anyone can do what I'm about to show as long as they follow each step very carefully. In order to make these bus bars, which are fairly thick, you're going to need to use 5 8 inch rigid type L copper tubing. You do not want to use type M, it's the thinnest wall. If you can get your hands on type K, that's even better because the walls are thicker than type L. Once the 5 8 inch OD type L copper tubing was cut into 3 inch lengths or 80 millimeters, I then flattened it out using a 2 and a half pound short handle sledgehammer and the anvil on my bench vise. After each one was perfectly flattened, I then took a 9 32nd inch drill bit and I drilled the holes you see here. They're 50 millimeters apart or two inches. Some people have used brass bus bars. I've even done it myself and have not had any issues. The only difference is copper is a much higher conductivity metal. Silver's the best, copper's the second best. And brass is a lower conductivity metal. So in order to carry the same amount of current, you would have to use a thicker piece of metal if this was going to be brass. That's the only difference. The good thing about the brass, it is more corrosion resistant than the copper. Put them all together and you can see how nice they are. It didn't take that long to put these together either. Okay, now let me show you everything you're going to need in order to plate these. The first thing you're going to need is a glass jar to mix everything up in. This one here goes up to two cups or 16 ounces. You're also going to need a plastic container along with a spoon. We're going to be measuring out some chemicals, so you're going to need a few little bowls to place the chemicals in. I picked these up at the dollar store. It was four for a buck. Since we're going to be working with chemicals, you're going to need a pair of gloves and safety goggles or safety glasses. You're also going to need some 91% isopropyl alcohol. In order to weigh the chemicals to the proper amount, you're going to need a digital or electronic scale. The chemicals we're going to be using, the first one is nickel sulfate. The next chemical is nickel chloride. And the last chemical we're going to be using is one that many people will have on hand, and that's orthoboric acid or boric acid, which is used for killing roaches and ants. Also used as an eye wash, and because it's a very good neutron absorber, it's used in nuclear power plants. They add it to the cooling water to absorb neutrons. Next, you're going to need some pure nickel. The pure nickel strip you see right here is 1 inch wide or 2.54 centimeters and the length is 6 inches or just over 15 centimeters. It has very good thickness. You can see it right there. And I've been using it for other electroplating projects. You can see it's a little chewed up from here down because the material or the nickel from this strip was deposited on a different object. If you're going to be plating things such as bus bars, you definitely want to get this strip. If you're going to be plating something that's much smaller, then you could possibly get by using pure nickel strips like you see over here that are used for spot welding cells together. If you can get your hands on a pure nickel welding rod, that can also work. The power supply that I'm going to be using to produce the necessary 4.5 volts is the one you see right here. I've been using this on my channel for many years. If you do not have a power supply, there is an inexpensive way to do this. All you have to do is take three D batteries like you see right here, tape them all together in series, and then you can use a jumper wire like this, just cut off one end, tape it really tight onto the positive, the red. On this side over here, the negative. In this case, I would use the white, or if you had a black, you would tape it right to there when it's stripped. And then you'd have a power supply that's gonna put out around 4.75 volts and sufficient current because you are using D batteries. The first step of the nickel plating process is to get the metal that you want to plate and get it bright and shiny. You could take a wire wheel to it, you can use abrasive paper, you can also use some double O or triple O steel wool. Just get it nice and shiny. 
The second step, we're going to measure out the chemicals. You're going to set the scale to grams. Right there, it's on grams. We're going to press tear. Take one of the bowls, place it on top. And now I'm going to press tear. Now we're all ready to measure out the chemicals and we're going to start off with nickel sulfate first. But let me go over the ratios first, depending on how much you're going to need. The average person is not going to need that much of the solution to do the plating. They can get by in eight ounces or one quarter of a liter. But if you're going to be using a liter, then you want to take 330 grams of the nickel sulfate per liter and you want to use 45 grams of nickel chloride per liter and then 38 grams of the boric acid. If you're going to be making 16 ounces like I'm doing in this video, then you're only going to need 165 grams of the nickel sulfate. We're going to combine that with 22.5 grams of nickel chloride and 19 grams of boric acid. If you want 8 ounces or a quarter of a liter, Roughly 82 grams of nickel sulfate, 21.5 grams of nickel chloride, and 10 grams of boric acid. Put this back on now. And I'm going to have to do one thing here. This only goes to 100 grams. So I'm going to have to measure 82.5 twice to give me the 165 that I need. So let's slowly add this. Go to 82.5. Perfect. 82.5 again. I should probably finish the bag off. See how close it gets. It's going to be very close. Very close. I hope it fits. Oh, wow. Couldn't be any closer. 82.55. So I got two of these. And right here is both together in one bowl. 165 grams. Now let's measure the nickel chloride. Oh, we're doing pretty good now. We're at 19, 9. 22.5. Close enough. 22.6. Put that in there out of the way. Put this to the side. We're going to be using boric acid. You want to tap this very lightly. You only need 20 grams. You don't want to create any dust. Keep it low and go slow. That's good, 20.6. And right here you can see all the chemicals ready to go. The 165 grams of nickel sulfate, 22 and a half grams of nickel chloride, and 20 grams of boric acid. The next step you're going to set up, in my case, my power supply. Right here you can see the power supply is connected. All I have to do is just turn it on. 4.5 volts will be at the positive and negative. Turn this off. Now I'm going to fill this with warm water. Now before I place 16 ounces of water inside this jar, and it has to be either distilled or reverse osmosis water, I'm going to clean the copper part first with the 91% rubbing alcohol. Make sure there's no oily residue at all. Air dry. I'm going to place this off to the side. Let me show you what's going to happen after the water is placed in and then we stir in all the chemicals. I'm going to take the plate, insert it inside the jar. I'm going to put this clip on the top, just like that. And that's going to be the anode or the positive. Once that's connected, I'm going to take the positive and I'm going to connect it right onto that plate. For the negative wire, what I'm going to do is take the bus bar, use a copper or brass wire, insert it into the hole. 
put the alligator clip from the negative right here and when the solution is inside you're going to reach down and you're going to keep the bus bar about one inch away from the anode or that nickel strip. After about 15 seconds of moving it very gently back and forth you're going to flip it around to the opposite side and do the same thing. The purpose of flipping it if you kept it in one position the side facing the anode is going to have a lot more nickel deposited and this side is going to have less. So you want to flip it around every 15 seconds and keep doing it and the whole process is only going to take around two minutes to give you a sufficient coating on this bus bar. So let me get the 16 ounces of water and you have to heat it up in the microwave. You want it to be around 120 to 160 Fahrenheit and then once it's in that jar we're going to carefully stir in one chemical at a time. Before adding the nickel sulfate to the water you want to make sure your gloves are on and you have a face shield or goggles on. Let me add some by spoon first. Just to get rid of a lot of it. Otherwise it might make a mess when I go to pour it. Now you want to stir that really good. Make sure it fully dissolves. Okay, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add the nickel chloride. A spoonful. Now that that's dissolved, the boric acid is a little bit more of a problem. It's going to want to stay on top. So when I pour it in, you're going to have to try and use the back of the spoon to work it against the wall to break it up and keep stirring it in. As you can see, the, the, it looks like foam on top. Let's work that in. And after this, we are ready to start the plating process. This solution is called Watts solution, W-A-T-T-S, and it's moderately acidic. Not too bad. Everything is fully dissolved. Now I'm going to take this out. Push it off to the side. Going to clip this inside in the back. Go about that high. That's good. Let's take the positive. Clip it on right over here. Now I'm going to turn on the power supply. 4.5. And we're going to reach it in. You can see how much current is flowing right over here. I can spin it around a little bit. And you're going to see the beautiful result. Just move it back and forth very gently. Fair amount of current there. Now I'm just going to spin it around one more time. There we go. And I can see it has a nice plating already. Like I said, it only takes about two minutes to put enough of a corrosion resistant finish that you won't have any problems. Spin it around one more time. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. We should be pretty good. Lift this out. Place it in here. And guys, look at that. Is that beautiful? Perfect mirror finish coating on there. And you're not going to have any problem with corrosion on this copper bus bar. And here are the four completed bus bars with that beautiful nickel finish. I will never have to worry about these bus bars corroding. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.